Today we're going to make a Valentine's Day dessert. I'm going to show you how to make a peanut butter and chocolate mousse parfait and these cute little heart-shaped ramekins. I'm Mar Marie Christiani, the Aerialist Chef. Let's get started. The first thing we want to do is make our chocolate ganache. And I just have dark chocolate chips here, which I put into the food processor just to chop them up. You don't have to do that. It just makes it a little bit easier. I've heated cream, heavy cream, and I'm gonna pour it right over the chocolate chips. Now don't stir it right away. You just wanna take the bowl and turn it around. We call this driving Miss Daisy. Just so that all the chocolate is covered with the cream. And then I wanna leave it for three to five minutes so that the chocolate has time to melt. And then we'll come back and I'll show you how to finish it. The bottom of our parfaits today will be Oreo cookies. So I've crushed a bag of Oreos in my food processor and I'm gonna put about a tablespoon and a half in each ramekin. You don't need to pack it down because it's a parfait. If you were doing a pie, you'd wanna pack it down so you can cut and pull out a clean slice. But we don't have to worry about that since we're serving it directly from the ramekin. Our cream has been sitting in the chocolate for three to five minutes and now we're gonna make it into beautiful ganache. Take a whisk, put it in the center, and you're just gonna make simple circles starting in the center and as you see it coming together, you'll move out to the edge. There you go, perfect ganache. You don't want to incorporate a lot of air, so don't take that whisk and start doing this. Just do it just like I did. You keep the whisk down in the bowl the entire time, and you'll come up with beautiful, perfect ganache, which will set aside to cool slightly while we make our peanut butter mousse. It's time to make the mousse. We start with a block of cream cheese at room temperature. Now, if you forget, to set your uh, cream cheese out to soften, you can put it in the microwave and zap it for about 15 seconds. All right, I'm gonna start on low. You can see this is nice and soft and then I'll pick up the speed. I want this to be completely smooth. When your cream cheese is perfectly smooth and there are no lumps, you'll add your peanut butter. This recipe has just a few ingredients and I've made it super simple. We're even gonna use Cool Whip instead of the, uh, usually I use a whipped cream that I whip, but I don't, you don't even need to do that. I've adjusted the amount of sugar because Cool Whip is sweetened and I don't want it too sweet. All right, so the peanut butter goes in and we're gonna bang those around a little bit. Don't rush this step. This is what's gonna make the mousse perfectly creamy. Okay, I can see that you don't see any cream cheese. You see it's all nice and together. And I'm gonna add my powdered sugar, which I have sifted. Always sift your powdered sugar. You can see it's just been sitting a little bit and it's already starting to get clumpy. And I'm gonna add just a pinch of salt. Vanilla extract, of course. This is a vanilla bean paste, which I prefer over extract if you can find it. And make sure you start this on low, otherwise you're gonna wear powdered sugar all over. All right, 
right, we're even done with the mixer now, you see? Now it looks nice and yummy. You could eat it right now, and believe me, it's delicious. But we're gonna add our Cool Whip. If you wanna use cream, go ahead and whip two cups of cream and add a quarter cup more powdered sugar than I called for. Always check out my tips section underneath the recipe and I give you all kinds of ideas that will help you. All right, I wanna fold this in and what that means is I wanna gently combine the two uh, mixtures without losing too much air. Now the beauty about Cool Whip, unlike cream, is it's a little bit more resilient. It's also dairy free, so if you have anyone with a dairy allergy, this is a great thing to do. Just make sure when you do ganache, since I'm using cream, you'll use an alternative like almond milk or something, and you'll need a little bit higher ratio of chocolate. And that's it, that's our mousse. There we go. That's perfect. You can see it's really a nice, light, airy mousse. All right, I'm gonna put it in a piping bag. And let me show you a secret I have. I have the piping bag, and it's a, this is about an 18 inch piping bag. You want a fairly large one, but if you don't have one, you can even use a gallon Ziploc. I press it over a pitcher. This is my French press. And I use that so I have both hands that I can use to pour the peanut butter in. That just makes it that much easier than trying to hold the bag with one hand and get all your filling in with the other. If your bag is smaller, remember we never fill our bag past uh, half, just a little bit past halfway and that's it. So I can pull it up and you see, that's perfect. And now I'm gonna fill the ramekins. We're ready to pipe our mousse into the ramekins. I've cut about a quarter inch size hole in the bag. And I'm gonna start on the outside edge. That way it'll be nice and neat and then just fill in the center. I'm gonna take an offset spatula or the back of a spoon and I'll just smooth it out. When we put the ganache, we want it to be perfectly flat across the top. So push your mousse all the way to the edge, just like when I, you always hear me say about cake batter, you always want to push it to the edge. Do it just like that. The advantage to piping the mousse in as opposed to spooning it in, which you can do, is it won't pull those crumbs up. If you're worried about that, you can always take the back of your hand and push your crumbs down before you put the mousse in just a little bit and that'll make it a little bit easier too. All right, our mousse is all in the ramekins. We're gonna stick these in the fridge or the freezer if you're in a hurry. And I just wanna set that up before I pour that ganache over. Our mousse has been chilling for about 15 minutes in the freezer and now I'm gonna put the ganache. It's still just a little warm, which is perfect, because now it can still be pourable. I put it in a pastry bag. I find that easier, uh, but if you don't wanna do that, you can pour it on. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna squeeze, and I'm gonna follow the outside edge, and then fill in the center. Now, I don't want a real thick uh, coating. I want it fairly thin. One of the tips that you will read about my ganache is I do put, when I'm doing a topping like this, is I'll put about two tablespoons of corn syrup with the cream, and that will keep your ganache nice and shiny after it comes out of the refrigerator. You can make this up to three days ahead of time, so if you're in a big hurry, it's a great dessert to make. Kids love it. And you'll see there be a little bit of gaps there. I'll go back and fill those. But I'll also take my hand and I'll shake the ramekins and tap them a little bit and make sure that they're all the way to the edge. Putting it in a pastry bag will give you a little bit more professional looking result. 
because you know we eat with our eyes first, right? That's it. And then I'm gonna pop these back in the fridge just to set up the ganache before I show you how I like to decorate it. It's time to decorate my favorite part. You see how gorgeous that looks, that shiny ganache on top? Now I have Cool Whip here and I've colored it. You can color Cool Whip with the regular gel colors. You can find them at Walmart, any craft store. So I have them all in bags. And I'm just gonna do, I think I'm just gonna do little rosettes, different colors. This is the fun part about decorating is that you can decide how you wanna do things. It's art, so there's no one way of doing it or any wrong way of doing it. And then I'll fill in there. And I've taken some candy melts, whatever I have left over when I'm making chocolate, like I made these lips and the leftover chocolate, I pour onto a Silpat, I swirl them all together, and then I put whatever sprinkles I have. And so it makes this cute little bark. I've made a heart, I'll put it over here, I think. And then I want my beautiful red lips there. I have my beautiful little rose. And I found these gummy in the candy section. I think they look great. I think that looks good. You do whatever you want to do, and you can do all of them different, as a matter of fact. So I'm very happy with that. I hope you are too. Thank you for checking me out, and I'll see you next time.